Good afternoon, everyone. Great to be with you today. My name is Howard Zemsky. I'm proud to serve as President and CEO of Empire State Development, the State of New York's Economic Development Agency. Let me start with some uh, special introductions, okay? Senator Brad Hoyleman. <laughs> Senator Ruth Hassel Thompson. <laughs> Assembly Member Maritza Davila. <laughs> Assembly Member Linda Rosenthal. Assembly Member Rebecca Seawright. <laughs> Assembly Member Aravella Simotis. <laughs> Gloria Steinem, feminist organizer. <laughs> I see you've heard of her before. <laughs> I want to recognize my colleagues at ESD because I'm proud of the work they've done. Joe Chan and Kevin Hansen have done amazing work. As a result of reduced crime rates and drug offenses statewide, a total of 13 correctional facilities have been closed at a savings of over $150 million annually. One of ESD's most important roles is to help repurpose state properties like Bayview. We meet with the community, we craft an RFP, and we do extensive due diligence on the responses. This team's proposal was superior in every way. The way it positively impacted the community its extraordinary mission and programming, and the fact that it was the state's best financial proposal. I'm not saying that was important. <laughs> Today's team has committed to make annual lease payments to the state for up to 99 years that have the potential to reach $200 million. And now, I am excited to announce that the winner of this selection process is a proposal to develop Bayview Correctional Facility into the Women's Building. The goal of the women's building will be to create a singular building to house many nonprofit organizations all dedicated to the global advancement of women. <laughs> Funding the women's building will be provided by the Novo Foundation. led by two other people I'm sure you've never heard of, Peter and Jennifer Buffett. <laughs> Novo Foundation's work focuses on the global advancement of women and gender equality around the world. Developing the women's building for Novo will be the Gorin Group, a WBE development company led by Leela Gorin. For more details on their winning proposal, please join me in watching a video that describes the vision for this exciting project in more detail. It's so symbolic and important 
to take this building, the walls of which, if they could talk, would tell us of many injustices, and make it a building that symbolizes and houses freedom. We've tried to have a woman's building here in New York before. In the 1970s, Ms. Magazine and others uh, found a building, but it was just too complicated. There were too many different elements to be put together in a short time. So it is long overdue. It has been wanted and desired and cherished and looked forward to for decades. Violence and discrimination against women and girls is a huge problem in this city, in this country, and across the world. And the idea of having some of the brightest thinkers from all over this city coming together and figuring out how are we going to change the world so that it looks different for our children and for their children. And the possibilities when we collaborate are, are endless. When we were able to purchase our building in 1983, um, this is right at the height of the AIDS crisis, and it literally became a lifeline for our community, a place for people to come and organize and, and just um, find some solace and some comfort and some community. In the last 30 years, we have seen a dramatic arc of progress, but we need to ride on that progress because there's still so, so many women and girls who are left behind. We work on women's rights all over the world. There are women's rights groups in Mauritania, in Kenya, in United Arab Emirates. Wherever they are, they are usually marginalized because they are working to transform society from within, bringing everybody together in one building where they can be, they can live, they can breathe, they can transform. It's huge. Having the ability to share a space with other women's organizations and having the support of the city and the state to do that could be really game-changing. It means that we could focus on the work, the mission of our organizations as opposed to expending all this energy struggling to survive and keep the doors open and the lights on. While we're a national and international men's organization doing work to end violence against women, being part of the women's building is really exciting because it really allows us to be around the energy and the creativity of women doing like-minded work. I can't think of anything more powerful than the transformation from a place that you know was there to sort of correct what's gone wrong in women's lives and instead this building will represent everything that's right about women's lives and empowerment for them. My name is Gloria Steinem, and I would be very proud to be one of the group that finally, after all this time, was able to have a women's building in the city of New York. Pamela Schiffman, and I'm the executive director of the Novo Foundation. First, all of us at Novo want to thank Governor Cuomo. Just last week, the governor signed a women's equality bill championing key protections for New Yorkers, including helping to achieve pay equity, strengthening human trafficking laws, ensuring protections for domestic violence survivors, and ending pregnancy discrimination in the workplace. Thank you also to Commissioner Howard Zemsky, Kevin Hansen, and Joe Chan of the Empire State Development Corporation, to all of the state and city leaders here with us today, and to our partner and developer, and my dear friend, the extraordinary Leela Gorin. <laughs> Leela is the founder of the Gorin Group, a women-owned real estate development and investment company. 
I also want to especially thank all of the amazing activists that are here in this room today. At Novo, we hear every day from girls and women's organizations that are struggling to pay their staff, to keep their lights on, to serve their clients. The work of these advocates is too essential to our future to be this vulnerable. In this country, the median wealth for single black women is just $100, compared to $44,000 for single white men. A Latina woman earns just 54 cents for every dollar earned by her white male counterpart. We have glass ceilings, but we also have very sticky floors. And safety for all girls and women remains elusive. Today, one in every three women around the globe will be beaten, raped, or otherwise abused in her lifetime, with trans women of color being murdered at shocking rates. We owe it to the women and girls of New York and far beyond to end the disparities that hold us back. And that's exactly what the Women's Building is all about. This new vertical neighborhood will be a living model of the values that unite us, collaboration, partnership, equity, and justice. After all, this new building will rise within the walls of the former Bayview Women's Prison, a space that less than three years ago was incarcerating women, overwhelmingly poor women, women of color, mothers, women denied an education, women with histories of abuse and trauma miles long and a space that in 2010 had the highest rate of reported staff sexual violence of any prison in the United States. So today is a historic opportunity to reclaim a site of pain and confinement and transform it into a place that supports and celebrates women and our contributions to the world. Along the way, we promise never to forget what happened to women behind the walls of Bayview and to so many other women like them. These very women, many of whom are here today, will lead the way in reimagining this building. We hope that every New Yorker will join us in celebrating the beginning of a transformation in a building, yes, but also in the lives of girls and women and the men and boys who love us from violence to compassion, from exclusion to equality, and from confinement to freedom and liberation. It is now my great honor to introduce Jennifer and Peter Buffett, co-presidents of the Novo Foundation, whose vision makes it possible for us to be here today. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Jennifer Buffett. And I'm Peter Buffett. It's easy to tell us apart. Uh, in 2006, we created the Novo Foundation with a mission to build a more just and balanced world. Nearly 10 years later, we are excited to see that vision come to life in such an exciting and concrete way. When we launched Novo, one of the many things that inspired us was the investment philosophy of Peter's father, Warren. He encourages investors to look for undervalued assets. Assets where huge value is held, but not widely seen. From day one, that led us to a clear conclusion. We must invest in girls and women. Even today, girls and women still only receive a tiny portion of philanthropic investment, despite the incredible potential that they hold. And unleashing that potential is perhaps the single best way to drive, drive long-term positive change. In fact, with this new building, we're convinced that New York is about to witness what we're seeing throughout the world. Investing in girls and women creates a ripple effect 
but strengthens our communities, our country, and indeed all of us. My dad also advised us to concentrate your resources on needs that would not be met without your efforts. To be clear, the idea for a women's building did not come from us. It's been a dream of women's rights leaders in this city since as early as the 1960s. They are the ones who envisioned a physical space that would allow women's organizations to accomplish more together than they ever could alone. But for one reason or another, a women's building just never happened. Activists were incredibly busy, funds were scarce, and the complexities of New York real estate didn't make things easy for anyone. 5, 10, 20, even 50 years later, a permanent space for girls and women had remained simply out of reach. Today that search ends, a building has been found, a vision has been restored. And together we will ensure that the decades old dream of a women's building is finally realized. From here on out, the movement for girls and women will have a permanent address in New York City. We are deeply honored and humbled to contribute to this vision and to the potential of girls and women everywhere. And we can't wait to witness the incredible things that will happen in this essential new space. It's now our honor to introduce a leader who has not only stood up for women, but has worked to fundamentally transform New York State for the new century. He has cut through gridlock to achieve bipartisan solutions to some of our most pressing issues. He has championed everyday New Yorkers who are fighting to protect girls' and women's rights, raise the minimum wage, and end, explo end exploitation. His leadership and vision have done so much to bring a women's building to New York. Please join us in a round of applause for the 56th governor of the state of New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo. Thank you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. What an exciting day this is. First to um, Pamela Schiffman, uh, who is the executive director, who has worked very hard on putting this together. Let's give her a round of applause for her great work. To Peter and Jennifer Buffett, who, uh, without whom we would not be here today, and this would just not be happening. So thank you so much for your help. We have the folks from uh, ESD, Commissioner Howard Zemsky, who's doing a great job, and Joe Chan and Kevin Hansen, who are juggling a lot of balls, but they are ke uh, they're keeping them all in the air so far. Let's give them a round of applause. To Leela Gorin, who is a master at coming up with a creative idea and finding a great way to do it. Let's give her a round of applause and thank her very much. <laughs> Gloria Steinem, who has uh, been such a powerful advocate for so many years. It's an honor to be with you, Gloria. Thank you very much. And to my colleagues in the legislature who uh, were part of not only the, the policy of uh, getting out of facilities, but also very helpful in the reuse of facilities and having the enlightenment to understand that sometimes a piece of real estate could be more valuable than just uh, the revenue it brings in upon its sale. And that's one of the things that's going to happen here. Let's give them all a round of applause. I'll tell you why this is uh, exciting for me personally. When you're in state government, a uh, big part of what we do is about the economics of the state, making sure the economy is running and that the tax policy is right and how are we creating new jobs. A lot of work we do is on infrastructure. I still hate that word, infrastructure. But roads and bridges and making sure that's up to date and mass transit. And that's sort of one constellation of activities. But then there's another constellation of activities, which are the social issues, which plays to the strength of New York, which has always been the progressive capital of the nation. Uh, it, pardon me if I sound like an arrogant New Yorker, but New York is not just another state. Uh, New York is a special state. And the other states look to New York to see what New York is doing. 
I spent eight years in the federal government. I worked in every state across the country. Somehow they could always figure out I was from New how that I was from New York. I don't know how they did it, but <laughs> somehow they always figured it out. And they would always come to me and they would say, "What is New York doing? What is New York doing?" Whatever the issue was. And when New York leads, people notice. And when New York leads, it literally changes the debate in the nation. So those social issues are very important to us as government officials. And we have been very aggressive on taking on those social issues. When we passed marriage equality in this state, it changed the debate across the entire country and really jump-started a national movement. We passed the toughest gun safety law in the nation, which told every other state that you can do this too. A couple of weeks ago, we set $15 as the new minimum wage, which reestablishes the standard of fair pay. We signed the toughest sexual assault bill for young women on college campuses. One out of five women can be expected to be assaulted on a college campus. Can you believe that? We passed the first uh, and the toughest sexual assault bill uh, when it comes to dealing with that issue. So on the social side, we're very aggressive. We are aggressive progressives, I like to say, and setting the bar high. Today deals with two issues that this country needs an answer to. One is the phenomenon where this country puts more people in prison than any industrialized nation on the globe and spends an enormous amount of money keeping people in prison. It's not an exaggeration that in this state, for what it costs us to keep a person in prison, we could literally pay for an education at Harvard. There is something wrong with that mentality, that you have young people who are locked up, who are going to come out of the prison experience probably worse than they went in, and the recidivism rate is only getting higher instead of investing in prevention, which is in this case education, job opportunities, alternatives, or investing in reentry, which is once a person comes out, make sure that's the last time the person comes out. Uh, we've been very uh, aggressive on both ends, keeping people out with alternatives and uh, very aggressive on the reentry program so people don't go back. When we say we closed Bayview and uh, Commissioner Zemsky said uh, we closed 13 facilities, we saved a lot of money. Yes, we saved a lot of money but we also have 5,500 fewer people in prisons today. I will go down in history as the governor who closed more prisons than any governor in history, and I am very, very proud of that because we have to change the psyche and change the thinking. So closing Bayview was exactly the right thing. Second problem that we have to deal with is the very blatant, ugly truth that we discriminate against women. A couple of years ago, I was getting ready for the state, of st the state, and I was going to propose a women's equality agenda. And my father was alive at the time, and we were at a sort of very polite dinner party. And they said, well, Governor, what are you talking about? Uh, what are your ideas for the uh, state of the state? I said, well, uh, discrimination against women is a major problem, and we're going to propose a women's equality agenda. And uh, a woman across the table said, well, you can't say that, that we discriminate against women. Uh, I said, why not? She said, well, that's, that's very harsh and very negative for a governor to say. Uh, and my father, God rest his soul, said, yeah, but it's the truth. <laughs> and, you know, that was my father. And that was right. If you are unwilling to admit a problem, you will never solve it. Individually in your life as a collective, the first step is admit the problem. And we discriminate against women, period. There is a glass ceiling. They make $11,000 less per year, $500,000 less over a lifetime. 
32 times less likely to be a CEO, twice as likely to live in poverty. But that is a fact. That is a fact. I have three daughters. My father's family, 14 grandchildren, 13 daughters out of 14 grandchildren. God <laughs> was telling us something. But my three daughters, the truth is, it is a man's world, that line from the old song. There are stereotypes and biases that are built into our culture. And let's admit it, otherwise you're never going to resolve it. And that's what the Women's Equality Act was all about, first state to put together a Bill of Rights for women. Pay equity, human trafficking, it's a, employment discrimination, et cetera. A Bill of Rights for women, recognizing and acknowledging that they are not yet fully equal to men. That's why we formed the Women's Equality Political Party. Why? Women should have their own voice. Organize, mobilize, speak up as women with a women's agenda. They have a political party for everything. They have a poodle lover's party. You know, <laughs> women have an agenda, they have a voice, they have a perspective, organize and make your case. And that's what this women's building does so well. When Peter said they were working since the 70s to have a building, how can it take so long? One building to be the headquarters of the women's equality movement, where women can work with women and men. What are the issues today? How do we resolve them? How do we focus on them? And we are so proud to be part of this. Just the physical institutionalization that says there is a women's building because there are women's issues, and there's a women's agenda, and we have to focus on it as such. And the symbolism that we could take a former women's prison with the despair and the defeat that a prison says, because that's what a prison is. A prison is the evidence of the defeat of society. Your family system and structure was defeated. Your education system was defeated. Your safety net system was defeated. That's what a prison is to me. It's a sign of defeat and people you lost to productive society and people who you have no answer for but to put in a place where you really do know and believe they're not going to be improved by the experience they're actually going to be further hindered by the experience. That's what a prison is. And we take down an institution of failure and defeat, and we rise from those ashes, will be a building about the future and potential and a true social reform. And that's what the women's building is going to be all about. I applaud Peter and Jennifer and Pam and Layla uh, and all the people who work so hard to make this a reality, this is what New York is all about. This is what New York is all about. Now we get to go to every other state and every other city and say, where is your women's building, by the way? Because every city should have one. Thank you and God bless. Before we conclude, I want to recognize Senator Vilmanette Montgomery, who is here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it's impossible to add to the governor's comments. Celebrating history is, is really good, but making history is even better. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for making history here in New York. And special thanks to the Buffets, the Novo Foundation, and their partners. Thank you all very much.